All right, welcome back. If you just joined us, it is still the News Up Thursday. News Up Thursday, we're diving straight into our conversation like we did intimate a while ago. They will be looking at the data and um, telephone tax as um, announced by the Minister for Finance. She did say that come 2023, the federal government will begin the implementation of um, uh, telecoms and beverage tax. Uh, we're looking at an increase uh, of 5% on uh, virtually all telecommunications um, um, services. So uh, we, we need to make some sense from, from, it, from this. Uh, we, need, we have the experts in the house uh, to help us bring clarity uh, to this conversation around the telecom telecoms task. And um, he's none other than Tawo Yedele, who is um, a fiscal, he's a fiscal uh, a policy policy leader. Yes, he's a fiscal policy partner and an African tax tax leader with Price Waterhouse Cooper. Uh, he's joining us this beautiful morning to make some sense of the conversation. Good morning, Tawo Yedele. Good morning. Good morning, Tawo. Good morning, David. Um, Tawo, I'm, I'm hoping we could have some. Morning. Yes, I'm hoping we could have some more light on your face. I'm sure our viewers will want to have a clear picture that we are speaking with the right Tawo or Yedele. Your your face is a bit dark, but we're hoping that you could help us with more more light on your face. Uh, maybe that would. Um, okay. Yes, yes. If you can do that, fantastic. Uh, then let's 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 dive into the conversation. Telecoms task. It's one tax that um, many Nigerians seem to frown at. We are looking at um, a sector that has spent so much, that is spending so much. Uh, the figure I got um, uh, yesterday uh, put it at about 60 billion naira monthly is being spent by telecoms operators to power uh, their operations in Nigeria. Um, a huge number, I must say, out there, Taiwan. But then help us understand what this old telecoms tax is all about then we can begin to investigate the impact that this could have on the system all right thank you very much uh, david um yes so i think maybe the starting point um is to look at the legal basis for this uh, new uh, tax that is being uh, introduced so in the 2020 finance act which came into effect uh, from 1st of January 2021, that's uh, about one and a half years ago now, the lawmakers, based on the proposal by the executive, uh, added a new provision to the Customs um, and Excise Tariffs uh, Act that says that government can now impose excise duty on telecommunication services. So that would include uh, data, it include voice, or actually any services that is regulated by the Nigerian uh, Communications Commission, uh, NCC. Now, in that law, no rate was specified, but the law empowered the president to determine the rate uh, at which the task would be imposed uh, by an order. So by 1st of April 2022, that's a few months ago, the um, president delegated the power to the finance minister, uh, who then issued uh, what we call the 2022 fiscal policy measures and tariff adjustment order, uh, stating that uh, telecommunication services, including prepaid and postpaid services, will be charged to excise duty at 5%. So what does that mean? What it means is once that law um, has been implemented, the amount you pay for any telecommunication services would attract an extra 5% charge. But you may not even notice this on the surface. For example, those who buy 100 Naira recharge card or air sign will still be able to buy 100 Naira recharge card. What would then happen is that uh, it will be exhausted faster than before, you know, by a factor of the five percent. So if you used to make, you know, twenty minutes call before, maybe you now make uh, eighteen minutes or nineteen minutes call. Uh, so that is essentially how it should play out. Now it is the first time that Nigeria is imposing excise duty on services. 
Uh, historically, Nigeria had excise duty on tobacco, on alcohol, spirits, and the like, and not on uh, not on services. Um, we have these in many countries around the world, particularly East African countries. Uh, so it's not new, but you always always have to contextualize all your policies. So, like you mentioned, you know, these telecommunication companies have huge costs, but many of them also make profit. But we can't use the lenses of the big players like MTN, Airtel to judge the entire sector. There are people who are struggling in that sector. And another part is also that the sector, uh, according to them, said they have about 39 different taxes we have to contend with. So, the question then is, why are we not doing anything about the multiple taxes they are paying to try and you know repeal and harmonize you know many of them this is even in addition to informal taxes they have to pay sometimes to non-state actors to protect their assets uh, like their mass for example uh, many countries around the world you don't have to deal with that many countries around the world will not power their infrastructure for telecommunication using diesel 24 7. Putting all of this together, uh, it comes to a conclusion, at least for me and for many people, uh, that the timing should have been um, uh, better. This is the time that we need to uh, make sure that we only support and facilitate businesses and individuals, and also to make sure that while you're doing that, you think about protecting the poor and the vulnerable. It has come to a point now uh, and I put some of these up in my social media post recently, that if Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory were to be developed today, then access to the internet, data, and telecommunication services will, cl will be classified alongside uh, food and shelter and water. It is that basic. So what that means is we could have started this task by looking at only postpaid services, which is usually the, you know, uh, the contract that the elite will subscribe to, and maybe they can afford 5%. Or you could have created a threshold, like we have for the electronic money transfer. You don't pay it until you transfer above 10,000 naira. You could have done the same thing. So you don't pay this tax unless your consumption in a month exceeds a certain threshold. That way, you protect the poor and the vulnerable, because in a way, I do think that uh, many consumption of telecommunication services is really seed, not fruit. And we have to be mindful not to be taxing seed. Thank you so much for that. I mean, before we even go to the recommendations and everything, um, um, I, I was wondering what your thoughts are about this. First, as a citizen, then as, um, as a tax expert. A lot of people are saying this is going to be backbreaking. This is one tax too many as individuals. And the prices of every service right now that is very connected to telecommunications is going to skyrocket. Let me get your impression where you heard this the first. Yeah, you know, so this is something even, even when the conversation started. So I was a member of the uh, committee that drafted the final bill. Uh, I made my views known. Um, so it's not new to me. I'm also, I have to be honest with you that I'm surprised that even the telecommunication sector, I'm only just picking it up now. <laughs> it's been there. Uh, when the law was passed, people like me and a few other people uh, put a lot of stuff in the, in the public domain. We had media interviews and we mentioned these things. Uh, but generally, it seems like Nigerians are very reactive. Uh, and the problem with that is most times, uh, if you allow the thing to already uh, happen, it's difficult to roll back than if you got involved at the point when it was still being discussed. Uh, interestingly, even the Minister for Communication uh, also said you know, openly to the media that he was not in support, uh, even though he's a member of the cabinet that proposed the tax. Anyway, but to your question, so to me, um, which is what I'd recommended to government was, if you have to do it, make sure you only uh, start with the uh, upper class, uh, you know, uh, postpaid contracts. Uh, that, that wasn't uh, accepted. So what came to my mind immediately is we have so many people living in poverty. We have so many people struggling to survive. You know, think about what happened during the COVID lockdown, right? If not for technology and telecommunication, maybe we'll not be talking about what we're talking about today. Yes. The reason why we survive and we, we manage to keep our heads above the water 
was losing out to the internet telecommunication. So we have to look at it from that point of view that if a lot of your people are living in abject poverty, do you want to impose? You can't give what you don't have. They really don't have a lot to give anymore. So that didn't happen. And for me, that was uh, unfortunate. As well as you then, by extension, look at very small yeah, you micro know. businesses. Yeah. That if they manage to even have a better pass, my neighbor generator to power their business because of this, has gone up. Logistic about transportation is completely unbelievable. Yes, uh, if you are procuring anything that requires FS, you know, the, the FS rate is over the roof. On top of this, now you have an additional tax to worry about. You, you know, you know, Ta Taiwo, you, you sound, you did sound like um, it, it's, it's cast in stone. Um, uh, the fact that the government decides that uh, it will start implementation in 2023 means. Um, uh, the government still has the prerogative of when they want to begin the implementation of that part of the Finance Act. Um, sadly so, law is made by man for man and not man for the law. I mean, man makes the law for man, so man still has control of the law. Why am I saying this? I'm looking at the timeliness of, uh, of this whole implementation. Like you did say, Nigerians are living far below poverty lines. The pressure is virtually on all sides and um are we are we are we going to kill the chicken that lays the golden egg because like you did say this is the sector that got this economy out of a quadmire it found itself during covid 19. now we are going to be dev bedeviling them with so many tax and and the truth be said it is the the the, the common man uh, the consumer that pays the brunt the timeliness of this implementation for me calls for concern isn't there a possibility that government could say, let's, since it's already a, a law where it could be revisited by the National Assembly because it is not a very conducive law as, as it stands, can't government extend uh, the date for the uh, possible implementation of this, of this part of the law? Can't, can't that be done? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, nothing is cast in stone if it's if it's done by human beings, right? Um, if it's done by God, then we all have to go on our knees and pray to God. But this is something that is human made, so it is possible to review it. It's possible to amend it. It's even possible to repeal it and say we don't want it anymore. Uh, all of that is possible. But the process uh, works this way. The lawmakers have enacted the law. They have delegated the power to the president to determine the rate uh, and by extension when we should comment. So an order has been issued dated 1st of April 2022. That order gave 90 days moratorium before implementation, which means implementation should commence or should have commenced on the 1st of July 2022. That's why people are talking about it because implementation was meant to have commenced uh, last month now the announcement about commencement being pushed to 2023 for me i will not take it to the bank right because i i read it and the press was quoting the director general for the budget office that is not the procedure for delaying the implementation of a law or an order right what you expect is another order uh, signed by the minister on the order of the president, uh, changing the commencement date. The, the enforcement of this task is by the custom service. Custom is going to take a big news of men. So they're not going to work on that. I'm sure that if we go to the telecommunication companies now, their experience will be very different. But, but so I agree. Yes, people, and therefore, you know, modify the design of the law itself so we can protect the vulnerable people. Our government can say, well, you know what, we're going to delay it until another year, or maybe we are even suspending it indefinitely. All of these are on the table, but there has to be very meaningful engagement based on using data and intelligence and analysis to get governments to change their minds not just uh, complaining like people would because really there's no good time to introduce a tax i've never seen any country anywhere in the world where people say now we are ready for a new tax right people would always push back 
but it is the responsibility of government to make sure that whatever decision they are making is evidence and data driven and is in the overall interest of the economy and by extension the people i mean taiwo i mean what what a, what a better way to you know this was, this was pretty spot on though nobody likes tax even the rich i mean everybody is running away from tax as much as they can but it is useful for the for the for the society and we're still going to talk about that please just sit tight taiwo uh, we're going to come back after this break to continue the conversation this is news up stay with us With the rise in cases of kidnapping, banditry, cold clashes, bombings, and other acts of terror, it seems the current state of insecurity is relatively higher than ever before. Insecurity affects us all. It affects everything from our personal freedom, how we travel, from the cost of goods and services, to even our physical and mental health. Therefore, we have a duty to help security agencies protect us better wherever and whenever we can. If you see or hear something suspicious in your neighborhood, don't keep it to yourself, but be sure to say something to the right authorities. Remember, you could just be saving a life and that life you save could be yours. This is a message from the Silverbird Group. Welcome back. This is News Up showing live on Silverbird Television, Silverbird News 24. We are talking tax, especially when it comes to taxation of the telecom sector. And we'll be speaking with, before we went on break, with um, a Taiwo Yedili uh, and uh, uh, a leader in the tax industry in the continent and a senior partner at the PWC. Uh, Taiwo, thank you for staying with us. I want to ask, um, with the way the Nigerian government is promoting the digital economy and encouraging people to go into the digital economy, won't this be somewhat of a, of a setback to the achievement of, um, you know, Nigeria hitting a particular uh, level of digital economy come 2030? Yeah, so... Um one, um, you know, whenever you impose a tax, you are transferring resources from the private sector to the public sector. So generally, the private sector is known to be a better, um, you know, uh, manager of resources. So anytime you do that, you have to ensure that what government will do with the money will be more productive than what the uh, private sector will do with it. If you also think about the, you know, the digital policy of Nigeria, uh, financial inclusion, uh, even the economic plan, all of these, uh, you know, rest significantly on, on technology and internet and by extension, telecommunication. Uh, by the way, there's, uh, you know, an analysis that some data that the World Bank provided indicating that the uh, the size or the growth rate uh, as well as the revenue of the telecommunication sector in Nigeria as a percentage of GDP uh, it is less than three percent about three percent about you know the network is not friendly this morning we we are hoping. We're hoping. I, I hope it's not all about um, data uh, because, um, like I, did, I, I keep saying, 
Um, even the telecoms operators should also come out straight sometimes with, um, you know, we need mechanisms to even understand how we are being charged. Tawo, if you're back, we lost you there a while ago. Um, you had a line of thought. We lost you there a while ago. If you can um, stay, stay on your line of thought, uh, you're back. Tawo, yeah. Yes. Uh, so I hope you can hear me. So we still need to continue to support that sector for it to grow, for it to be able to support other, other, other sectors as well. And then government can start thinking you then uh, start the way that does not uh, stop progress and it's not counterproductive. Based on the data provided by the NCC, the revenue of that sector in 2021 uh, was you know, close to 4 trillion and it's growing. So if you estimate it, you're essentially looking at you know, government making close to 200 billion naira annually. Assuming that, you know, the... Uh, while it's not uh, you know, a bad thing for government, what many of us are saying, and this is uh, also contained in the national tax policy that was, was produced 17, is that I focus on broad-based base taxes and indirect. You need to harmonize other taxes and reduce the, in the direct tax rate. So imagine today if government refused about 20 different tax laws uh, because they are creating more problems and solutions, and they replace them with just one tax on telecommunication there will be less resistance because people will understand that government is the money uh, and then they are willing to make the sacrifice. So what's happening now is people are paying a lot and government is collecting so little because there's so much inefficiency in the collection process and administration as well. Uh, in fact, in many countries around the world, if you have excise tax on services, it will not be collected by customs. It will be collected by the federal, the internal revenue service or the federal internal revenue service in the case of Nigeria because they are the ones who have the knowledge to do the audits and look at their books. So there's still a lot that we, we, we need to do before we get to a point where we finally impose this tax. Uh, but I think that maybe it's work in progress and hopefully now government is willing to re-engage, uh, have better consultation and then come up with a better uh, this time uh, for this tax as to how it should work. You know, you know Tao, it is extremely very important um, that government don't um, begin to implement certain laws in isolation. Uh, that is um, exactly what we are looking at today. Uh, this particular telecom tax is being looked at in isolation. Now, what I mean by that is um, they're not looking at the ripple effect that it would have on virtually every other sector that are obviously being grounded by certain negative economic fundamentals. Uh, all of these sectors are being faced with the 800 naira per litre uh, of diesel price. All of these sectors are being faced by uh, the increase in the price of, um, of PMS petrol. All of, these have been, uh, uh, all, all of these sectors are equally being faced by uh, a lack of um, power supply. These are all negative fundamentals and uh, the ripple effect of an increase in telecom taxation will run down through all of these sectors. It could be one too many for Nigerians to handle. 12.5% consumable tax on telecoms. Taiwo. Yes. So we already have the 7.5% VAT, then 5%. Um, and your, your point is, is correct, you know, because when you have a tax, uh, and um, data services we really need it. I've, I've seen a story here and um, the operators are saying that um, excessive taxes are reasons reasons for How? for for bad services How did you know where yeah. i was actually going to <laughs> I, I, I was about to tell Taiwo. i was about to tell Taiwo, you see what we're going through 
I mean, back then, about I think about a month or two ago, they came out that the reason why they're bad services because Nigerians like, kept yeah. complaining, call yeah. dropped, you keep you charge yeah. for it, you send an SMS, it doesn't deliver, the, you, you, you're, you're charged for it, you're making the call, you don't hear the person, you're charged for it, nothing, no record, no, no um, compensation. Your data, your data Whatsoever, usage, you, you don't know? even have, you don't even have a mechanism to know how your data has been, is been, is is been, is been, is been used. You get um, maybe a twelve gig, and it's supposed to last yes, you for uh, one uh, month. I, I, mean, I think. And as regards that data, I think there are some phones right now, um, or a level you. of yes that actually do. Um, I, I, I get I get a, a, a bit by bit um, breakdown of how I get to use my data. Mm. Um, even when, when I just make a, a WhatsApp call, I get a breakdown of it. When I send a, a, a particular file, I get a breakdown of it. So I think it improves as it goes on. The real challenge is in the quality of service that we have. You yeah. can see what's happening now. This is internet connection that we're using yeah. right here, yeah. right? So if this tax now comes in, I wonder what it's going to be like. Mm. It, 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 it now becomes, it's either you increase the prices or you reduce the value. Like we see uh, in uh, virtually every consumables right now, uh, you hear bread makers are threatening that they're going to go on strike. Uh, or better still, you see the, incre the increase in the prices of, of that commodity. And then if you want a lower price, you all also get that same commodity out there. But you could tell that you're getting a lower value mm. for that money that you're, you're being paid. Do we have Taiwo back? If we do, uh, let's connect and probably get Taiwo's final, final take on the conversation. Okay, we're still expecting Taiwo. You, you, you know, Messi, we, we can't stop having this conversation. Yes, David, one more thing. Sorry to cut you short, but one more thing. Okay, we, we've got Taiwo back. Yeah. I think you should conclude with your All point. right, so Taiwo, uh, you, were, you were the line of thought. Sorry about that. Here we are discussing data and telecom tax. Uh, the operators did come last, last mm -hmm. month to say that um, uh, it is these taxes, this uh, multiple taxation that they are being faced with that's obviously affecting their services. You won't blame them. You really would, would, not, would not blame them. That is where we are at the moment, Taiwo. Uh, let's get your parting uh, thoughts on this conversation. Yes, um, I think, you know, like I said before, um, there's never a convenient time to pay tax. Uh, we do recognize that government needs money. Uh, we heard that, you know, the debt service cost alone exceeded revenue in the first four months for the federal government. So it's recognized that government needs to mobilize revenue. Uh, so people are so willing to make sacrifices. But we have to make sure that only those who can afford to make those sacrifices are being asked to do more. White governments, on the other hand, must improve efficiency. Uh, they have to be intentional in how they design their tax policies to protect particularly the vulnerable and small businesses. And more importantly, is for government to try and implement other complementary reforms, like uh, reducing multiple taxation, reducing the burden and the impediments to doing business and creating employment so that overall, uh, you know, no matter how hard it is, people still feel like they can survive and the country is considerate about their circumstances. So those would be my parting shots. It's a difficult time in Nigeria. It is across the world, uh, but we have to make sure that policies do not complicate the already difficult situation we are dealing with. Okay. All right. Um, thank, thank you so much, Taiwo, for that. Um, Let's talk about the, the tax bracket right now. The informal sector is, I mean, you don't, you don't, they are, they, are, they are really not captured as much as that. I want to get your, your comment on how that can be managed, as well as if taxation is the new oil in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, you know, in, in Nigeria, we have three broad categories of what you can call a tax. So there's the former tax that is imposed by governments, is collected by governments, and is reported. And that's what we consider as very low in Nigeria when we refer to tax to GDP ratio being 6%. Uh, you have informal taxes. So these are taxes mostly uh, not backed by the law sometimes collected by government agents, sometimes by non-state actors, uh, and they are huge in Nigeria. So that's informal sector that you're saying they are not captured in the tax net. They're actually paying a lot. There was a report by SBM Intelligence uh, recently that shows that some of these informal sector players, including Okada riders that are being banned, pay as much as three different taxes on a daily basis. 
amounted to something in the range of 1,000 to 3,000. So imagine paying like 90,000 a month in tax. Many of us that are employed, you know, any salary don't even pay as much, right? So they are paying. It's for government to try and find a way to formalize the informal tax days and harmonize it in a way that is convenient for the informal sector to pay. And more importantly, that they get something in return for the taxes that they pay. Um, you know the the uh, you know uh, you know the ag bureaus, as well as the uh, association of uh, the union of drivers and taxi drivers and all of that uh, in Lagos are said to be collecting over 120 billion a year from taxes. I'm not aware of any roads that they have fixed. I'm not aware of any infrastructure they provided to their members. So this is money that could have gone to government to improve society, but it's going in the wrong direction. So for tax to become the new oil, we have to design it properly. Uh, across Africa, the average tax to GDP ratio is about 18%. In many countries around the world, it's even higher than that. South Africa is about 26%. So indeed, tax can be the new oil, but first and foremost, uh, we have to remind ourselves that tax is how government shares in the prosperity of people and businesses. So you have to have the enabling environment for people to prosper, for businesses to prosper, and then tax can become your new oil. You know, there was a time that Elon Musk posted, uh, you know, there was a tweet post by Elon Musk saying that he was going to pay personal income tax of $11 billion. $11 billion is more than the personal income tax we've collected in Nigeria for the past three years in all the states combined. So when people prosper, they have the ability to pay taxes. By the way, you know, this DAPA movement, when our young people are desperate to relocate abroad, you, you see the countries they are going to don't pay small amounts of taxes, right? The tax rates in those countries are very high, but yet people are willing to relocate. What that tells you is that I would rather make, you know, 20 million naira and pay 30% as tax than to struggle to make, you know, 1 million naira and not pay tax at all. So when you enable people and you enable businesses, then it's a, a no-brainer that you can then make a lot of money from taxes. America generates about $6 trillion every year from taxes alone. That's more than the GDP of Africa by a factor of two. So that's my, my take on you know, taxes and whether it will be the next uh, black gold. Oh, yes, um, Tyro, the World Bank report puts Nigeria's uh, poverty, uh, poverty numbers at um, um, 95.1 million for 2022. Apparently, what we see here is um, government is uh, tasking poverty uh, because when the people are poor and they are made to pay this level of taxes, you're, you're, you're taxing uh, poverty, uh, which is not what um, uh, we are hoping for uh, as a people and as a nation. Tawo Edele, senior partner and tax leader, Africa tax leader, thank you uh, so very much for your time with us on, on the segment, on, on uh, today's uh, on News Up. Tawo Edele, thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Do have a fantastic day and uh, we're hoping that um, our data services and telecom services will improve uh, going forward. All right, we'll go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll have uh, our next conversation, which will be around um, politics. Yes, road to 2023, uh, the controversy, the religious controversy uh, in the polity as we speak. Don't go away. The show continues shortly. <laughs>